Hi, I'm Tom Scarpello of Revology Cars, and this is car number 241, a 1967 Shelby GT350 in rapid red with jet black Le Mans stripes. Today, I'm gonna to take you on a walk around of this car and we're gonna go for a drive. Let's get started. Okay, 1967 Shelby GT350, rapid red. What a gorgeous color. Everyone who sees it loves it. I just think it is very rich and expressive and it looks absolutely fantastic on a 60s Mustang. The Le Mans stripes are jet black. That's a metallic color, it's a Porsche color. It's a great, modern, vibrant paint color with that original theme, so it looks original with a twist. At the front, straight 67 Shelby. This car is equipped with the optional quick latch hood latches, which replace the pins. This car is equipped with the torque thrust wheels with black painted inserts, which matches the black stripe, so very nice execution there. There's a further accent with the red painted brake calipers. And at the rear, straight Shelby GT350, of course, with the exception of the larger exhaust tips poking out from under the rear valance. Otherwise, totally stock looking. But the big news about this car is it is the first car that we have built that is equipped with the brand new Gen 4 Coyote engine, or I should say the TIVCT DOHC 5.0 liter engine. It's not officially the Coyote, that's a code name, and we're always admonished by Ford to call the engine by its proper name. So we're using the Coyote Gen 4 engine. The Gen 4 engine was introduced with the 2024 Mustang GT. Power went from 460 horsepower on the Gen 3 up to 480 on the Gen 4. The power increase was due to a new dual throttle body intake manifold and dual air boxes. Now, for the Revology application, we use the Gen 4, but we're not able to use the dual throttle body intake with the dual air boxes, and I'll show you why. So we're constrained by package space. Now package, in automotive terms, is basically how you fit everything together. When you're designing an automobile, you, know, you have to consider all of these components, relationship to one another, the space that they need to be able to function properly, and you have to package everything efficiently. Now, the S650 Mustang and the S550 before it, it's a much wider car, much larger and wider car, much more space to package a dual throttle body intake and dual air boxes. But for us to be able to do that would have required a complete redesign of the aprons and relocation of a lot of stuff. And at the end of the day, just really didn't make economic sense to do that. Besides 460 horsepower in an early Mustang is already ridiculous. So if you really want to be ridiculous, go for the 710 horsepower GT500. So for the natural aspect application, this is what we have. Now looking at it, you're not gonna be able to tell it's a Gen 4 because you know, it really looks very much the same as a Gen 3. There'll be some very tiny little markings that would indicate that you're looking at a Gen 4, but other than that, pretty difficult to tell. But it's plenty of engine for this car. Okay, so the interior of car 241 is finished in black Napa leather. This is a Porsche leather. It has the red contrast stitch, which matches the exterior. Very nice touch. I personally like the contrast stitch. The trim is the brushed aluminum, which is a more premium execution of the original aluminum trim that was on the 67 Deluxe interior cars. Overall, very nice place to spend time. In. So enough yapping, let's go for a drive. So the Gen 4, you know, driving it, you don't really notice much difference between this and the Gen 3. Idle's slightly lower, maybe 50 RPM lower. Idle's at 600 RPM. So it's, you know, smooth. You got that characteristic little woofle sound. Very well behaved. Transmission shift quality is excellent. It just really works extremely well. So the Coyote engine, was introduced in 2011. And it's based on the modular engine family that was introduced with the 1991 Lincoln Town Car. So in the 1980s, the Ford powertrain folks were looking at the um, upcoming emissions requirements, and they concluded that 
the company was not going to be able to meet the more stringent emissions requirements with their old pushrod engines. And so they proposed to management that the company would need to invest a lot. It was about a billion dollars. It might have been over a billion dollars. Develop this new engine family. And it's called modular because you know, it's designed for commonality so that they could do a lot of different configurations, you know, using a lot of the same parts and like reuse, you know, pistons and connecting rods and things like that, which all makes sense for manufacturing. And, you know, the outcome was a really nicely designed, very smooth running engine, which of course was able to meet emissions requirements. Now, meanwhile, the guys across town at GM kept running their old pushrod engine that originally debuted in 1955 and they were able to meet emissions requirements with that pushrod engine, and they still do. Even today, the Corvette C8 comes standard with a pushrod small block, which is based on that 1955 engine architecture. So that's pretty creative engineering. But on the other hand, we performance enthusiasts got a great deal out of this because we get an extremely sophisticated engine. The Coyote two years ago could have been a Ferrari engine. It's just technologically quite an impressive engine. And you get all the benefit of modern drivability, reliability, good fuel economy, serviceability. It's just lightweight, all aluminum. It's just a great solution. The Coyote engine introduced in 2011, known as the Gen 1. Then there was the Gen 2 version that came out with the S550 Mustang in 2015. And that Gen 2 ran from 2015 to 2017. That took power up from 420 in the Gen 1 to 435. And then that was replaced by the Gen 3 20. 18 and that ran through 2023 and then was replaced by the the gen 4. so we've built revology mustangs with each of the generations of coyote engine gen 1 to gen 2 transition was pretty easy smooth uneventful the gen 2 to gen 3 transition on the other hand was a nightmare almost put us out of business. It was really difficult. Modern engines are so complex. The electronics are a big part of the complexity. But then, as I mentioned earlier, the packaging is a real challenge. So the Gen 3 engine had a composite oil pan that had a different shape than the previous oil pan. So we had to move the engine back in the chassis which is, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but you know, if you have to move the engine at all, it means changing the motor mounts, you're changing the exhaust system, you're changing the transmission mount, changing drive shaft. It just, there's so many changes, but we did it and it was a good change. It ended up moving the engine further back in the chassis and it improved our front to rear weight distribution. So some of our applications were almost 50-50 but we have really good front to rear balance, so that's good. So the Gen 4 will roll out sequentially. We have four different powertrain configurations, automatic and manual, naturally aspirated, and automatic and manual supercharged. So this is the first naturally aspirated automatic 10R80. Then the second will be the naturally aspirated manual. Third will be the supercharged manual. And then the last one will be the supercharged automatic, which will actually happen sometime next year. It's kind of a staggered process and that allows us to ensure that we spend adequate time with each variant and make sure everything is perfect before we release it to the customer. And that's how we do things at Revology Cards.